pricing for a heavily anticipated game shows that potentially next-gen pricing could get a little steeper. Man, oh man, console gamers are upset. But should they be? Mm, let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay. So here's the issue, y'all. 2K21 was revealed as far as its pricing is concerned, this gen and for its next gen version. And it showed the possibility that games next gen will cost more. They showed the pricing for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X versions, and they both were listed at $70 retail for the base version. That suggests that AAA games going into next generation will also be $70, all right? Now, as f after this reveal, the community was split on this, right? And with that being said, I get it. I get it, I get it. But I, I am proud to say though, that even though the community is split on this, I say it's a 60-40 split with the majority of the gamers being on the side with, hey look, we didn't ask for a price hike, but we're not surprised we're getting one. It's been kind of long overdue, you know what I'm saying? And I'm happy at least with that because I see a lot of idiot heard stuff getting traction out there and I think we're at least putting our thinking caps on now, you know what I mean? Um. But I predicted this. <laughs> we predicted this two years ago. How so? I told you all for the 40% out there that are sitting there jumping head first into wood chippers, like this is the happening all over this silliness. I told y'all that trying to play purchase a uh, choice picker for other grown ass gamers, meanwhile yelling, help us government, help us as it related to loot boxes and microtransactions would lead to this. How so? Y'all can continue to listen. But for the rest of y'all, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that want to be educated, this is definitely for you. Now, I want you people though, that 40%, that swore up and down, if this happened, people would pick it and ride and, and cities and towns would get destroyed, on the advent of that not even coming close to happening, I want you to tell me now, after you call me a fool, when I predicted this, I want you to tell me now, what are you going to do? Are you going to shut the hell up and come to grips with reality? And if not, if you're not there yet emotionally, I'll get you there, I'll help get you there. Are you going to come to grips with reality or are you going to go ahead first in that wood chipper? Either or, it's fine us. We're still going to buy the games and we're going to play them. But we're here to help you. We're here to service, all right? Now, how do we get here in the first place? Beyond all that, how do we get here? Well, before we get into how we get here, there are four things in totality I wanna cover. First and foremost, how we got here, the history of game prices, again, the 40% argument, the vocal minority, the 40% argument against the current hikes, and despite all that bibble babble, what we should all learn from this, again, well, how did we get here? Well, games just simply cost too much to make, period. That, that's the most simplest excuse. I mean, not excuse, but the simple reason I can give you is that games cost too much to make. And it's, it, it is based off the rate of return that they're currently getting. Now, why do I say that? Because you have, uh, now, the biggest group that demand AAA games are console games. That's the biggest group that want the, all the bells and whistles that come with the AAA game are them. That group has plateaued to around 225 to 250 million gamers, okay? And don't take it from me, other developers are telling you this. They are telling you that, hey, this group has plateaued, they're really not growing. 250 million seems to be the ceiling. Hence why you got Xbox and other people trying to reach gamers mobily. You know what I'm saying? You just don't have more than 250 million people willing to go buy a console, a set device that they set in front of their TV for $500, whatever the, the initial launch price is, okay? And tools, unfortunately, like Unreal Engine 
even though going into this current generation made things visibly a lot more, you know, predominant or made things a lot more uh, possible as far as visual aesthetics and stuff like that, it didn't make doing those jobs easier. It just made the capabilities a lot more grand. But now you've seen development teams balloon from maybe 100 to three, 400, still hiring, um, you know, outsourcing uh, development uh, uh, projects out to China and at, at an additional 200 people, all to cover costs so they don't get hit with um, FICA taxes and things like that and stuff they gotta endure with having employees on the mainland. You know what I'm saying? Costs are soaring. And again, unfortunately, tools like Unreal Engine 4 didn't help with that. They just made, they just helped balloon the cost even further. Now again, as I said earlier, don't take it from me, take it from the devs themselves. Let me show you something. These are words courtesy of Amy Henning of, formerly of Naughty Dog, okay? And in a sit down with Gamer Bolt, she had suggested, let's just go over some of the direct quotes here. She said as much in an interview uh, with the publisher earlier this week, because of the increasing costs needed to develop games, the massive human costs necessary, she thinks that something has to give. And in more elaborate detail, she said, in quote, I think we keep doing it this way because we have the established companies and teams, and that's a resource, an asset you don't want to just throw away, she said. But on the other hand, we're seeing new story left and right where developers are folding and publishers are laying off hundreds of people. It feels like something is inevitable because of the cost of development and keeping all these people on staff, especially in, an, in expensive areas, just doesn't feel sustainable, period. Okay, so you may say, all right, well, that's just, uh, you know, that's just Amy Henning. But I implore you to definitely go out there and check with the homie, um, the homies at Remedy, the makers of Control and Alan Wake had to say, and Quantum Break. They also said that gaming, as far as the consumer base for console uh, gamers, the base that more likely than other bases want those AAA games, they have plateaued around 250 million games, okay? And if development costs are soaring solely for AAA games and the average consumer or the consumer base is not growing with those costs, then you got a problem. Especially if, like I mentioned earlier, if the things that you try to do, the initiatives that you try to have to try to balance those extra costs are being swatted down left and right because of the vocal minority, that ever so lovely 40%. No microtransactions here. Oh, no, yuck. Then something's got to give. Hence why this generation, you got more bugs, more incomplete games, and something just had to give to where you're going to have, it looks like $70 games next gen. There's nothing nobody's going to do about it. They ain't going to stop buying games, damn it. <laughs> Period. Now, the history of games. This is why I am pleased to see people not jumping head first into wood chippers throwing their children and loved ones into erupting volcanoes over this. There's no need to sacrifice the young. It's gonna be okay. Just let me show you something else. Way back in the day, we used to play a lot for, pay a lot for games. Now let me, I wanna change this for a second. Back in the day, the reason why I changed that to 45, what this is, this is a cost analysis adjuster. Way back in the day, there was a game that I bought on the Tandy 1000, I remember buying it at a store called Babbage's that, that turned into EB Games that then got merged into GameStop. The game was called King's Quest and it was $45. It was on five floppy disks. It was for the Tandy 1000 again. And, and it was like one of the best RPG PC storytelling games that I've ever played at that time. You know, um, the, one of the great Sierra games that'll go down in history of some of, as some of the greatest games ever made. And I remember paying forty five dollars for that. Now, as a young lad back in nineteen ninety one, what was the my forty five dollars that I paid for that game? What is the equivalent of that now after inflation? And our friends at DollarTimes.com will help us understand this. Back in nineteen ninety one. My $45 was equivalent today to $86.43. 
after you adjust for inflation. All right? So back then, I was paying $86.43 to play a game. Now, you may be saying to yourself, MMTK, that's just one game. Okay, you can believe that if you want to. But boom! Let me show you something. See this? Let me see if I can raise this. Back in the 90s in the Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1 days. You see this? You got games for $59.99. Okay? $64.99. $74.99. Do you see that? But then you say, well, that was just cartridges for the Super Nintendo. You get it. Okay, well, look. In the same vein as an NBA 2K series, back in the 90s, NBA Live 97 was $49.99. Now we've already been here. I put 45 in there for you. So when you paid 49.99 back in 1996, how much were you paying? You were paying the equivalent of $96 and one cent to get that game. And for the last several years, for a lot, for a long time, games have been stuck at 59.99. People were paying 59.99 in the 90s, even for discs. The Die Hard Trilogy was $54.99. Independence Day, $54. They were, almost, they were almost paying $60 back then. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Stop, 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 please. Lord of Jesus, stop. Now, on finally on to the 60%, or the, uh, uh, the 40%, the vocal minority who say, you know what? There is no feasible excuse for games to be costing $70 this year. And their arguments are because a lot more people are buying digital and that, you know, only 70% are buying physical. So because you have the, the drop off of what it costs to make digital games, opposed to the, the creation and the shipment and the selling of of physical because you're, you you don't have that cost in manufacturing and delivering that you know that game shouldn't cost seventy dollars that they're, they're beating us in the head with a cash register and I say that is a farce that is a farce here's why first and foremost when you look at how many games are sold digitally okay via percentage that includes not only PC and console games when the majority of the focus we're talking about are people, console gamers paying $70, but those are those numbers that these people cite are including PC, console, and guess what? Mobile games. So therefore, those numbers are skewed. Of course, 83% of people that play games are playing them digitally because most of those numbers make up mobile gamers. And we know mobile gamers predominate at least console gamers. We know that, I, I believe right now that mobile gaming is the largest gaming market out there. There are no physical mobile games. There are none. So stop using those numbers, they're a farce. All right, let me show you how. Let me show you something. Let's go here. This is Statista, one of the most respected stat collecting groups out there. They so, they're, so, they're so respected. Look, they try to make you pay. <laughs> they try to make you pay for their services. And they show you the decline of physical purchases for all of gaming. Used to be 20%, but now it's 83%. You see that? But that rise in digital gaming distribution is due to mobile gaming for the most part. They tell you that when they look at digital game distribution, even in their own reporting that's respected globally, digital games are defined as feed-based video games distributed over the internet. Digital games include downloads of full versions for gaming consoles, PCs, and mobile games for smartphones, tablet devices. Can we stop, stop, what are we doing, stop? Now, if we wanna talk about the conundrum that we're dealing with, $70 for AAA games, that more often than not, it is the console gamer that yearn for these AAA games that are gonna be $70. Because I'm not, and I'm not saying PC gamers aren't gonna pay for them. 
or ain't going to play them. They are. But a PC gamer, more likely than not, even on launch day, is going to find a, 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 a CD keys or somewhere where they're going to find like $11 off the game. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe even more, $15 off the game. So they're less affected by this price hike. If you want to buy your games at launch, this more affects the console gamer because the console gaming digital market isn't as vast as the PC digital market. So let's, we got to focus on console gaming. So if you focus on console gaming, even as far back as 2018, it, they tell you that via reports by Nielsen, okay, that 66% of surveyed console players would rather buy physical versions of games. 66%. So that's still the majority of console gamers would still buy physical over digital. Now, if you use what Statista, Statista showed you as an example of the trend, even though that's 2018 and we're in 2020 now, the trends show you that it's on average around a 5%, maybe a 7% growth towards digital distribution. Okay, so let's take that into account. Let's just use some basic math. So if in 2018, if 66% of gamers still prefer physical, let's add around 5% each year. 2019, it's going to be uh, maybe 61% and in 2020 by the end of 2020 it might be 56% that's still a majority of console gamers who prefer physical don't forget we still got Amazon we still got Walmart where people will go and buy their games despite what's going on at games, uh, GameStop don't be fooled People still buy the collector's editions, all that stuff. So it's reasonable to say that still the majority of console gamers, the most affected by this price hike, still prefer physical. So the arguments of you're making more money off of digital don't really apply here the way you're trying to apply them. Your numbers are skewed because you didn't do your due diligence. Period. Now, at the end of the day, <laughs> what can we learn from all this? Okay. Well, I will say this. Don't listen to the 40%. Don't listen to the vocal minority. I mean, they're out here arguing that even though the co with the cause of inflation, we were paying more for games way back when, they're trying to use skewed numbers to tell you that because of digital distribution, 83% of the games out here are digitally distribu or digital distribution and they're making more money, which those numbers are skewed. And they're also arguing now that because you're paying $10 a month to play online, that that should you know, be another reason why you shouldn't accept the, the $10 price hike from these publishers or devs. And my question to them is, what the hell does the additional $10 that I pay to Xbox or PlayStation got to do with CD Projekt Red's bottom line? The fact of the matter is we're arguing that this price hike is a necessity because the people who, the majority of people that want these AAA games are the console gamers. And the console gamers are not growing in the consumer base, but yet the cost to make these games are soaring. So that right then, they're the first thing we should learn is let's do not get fooled by the vocal minority, the 40% in this whole ordeal. But next, what we should also learn is that video games are just expensive. They're an expensive business. Now, hopefully tools like Unreal Engine 5, and machine learning presented by the likes of Microsoft and Google will help drive down those costs this generation. There is hope. Nonetheless, yes, you will get those entities like the EAs and so forth who will try to fool us into adopting their conveyor belt uh, money grab schemes like they tried to do with Star Wars Battlefront 2. And then when those things come, uh, uh, when we come to front with those things, as we come across those situations, rather, we need to stomp them out like we did with Battlefront 2. That said, we must not forget that this is a business. This is not a freaking charity. So there has to be a balance. If you want AAA experiences and that AAA experience to, to make cost a kajillion, 
then out of necessity, that business that made that congeal, that that paid a kajillion to make that game, they need to make 2.5 times a kajillion out of necessity. What is involved in that necessity, quote unquote? Employees, expenses, investors. Employees ain't gonna do this work for free. The people that are shipping these games or working on your, your network infrastructure, they're not gonna do it for free. The investors are not investing in this game and say, oh, just keep our dollar. They're not giving you their money for free. These things just are not done for free. So if you see a money draw, like a microtransaction or a loot box, and it doesn't affect you, but help keeps the company afloat, who cares? Stop trying to make purchasing choices for other gamers as long as it doesn't affect you. Okay? And stop trying to turn AAA gaming into a soup kitchen. It's a business. Else, you will continue to get watered down chunks of game implementation like you would get at a soup kitchen high in sodium bugs and patches that will shoot your blood pressure up to a thousand regret and that's it from your boy mm2k let me know what you think about what i had to say in the comment section below because like i always say here's what i think but if you did like what i had to say check out the links below to follow me those links will lead you to the broadband bullies pnts network hard knock digital culture and yes the stadium dosage and with that said god bless them like my grandma say bless they hard bless they hard god bless the 40 percent they just lost in the sauce do not get caught in their bibble babble and their farce numbers with that said you all have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace